Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my talk show. That's me, that one rebel, and this is a uh, late half rebel. And here's my guest, Ariana. What, what what's going on? Welcome. Hello. How you do? I I don't I didn't have any introduction planned oh. for myself. So I'm just like I. <laughs> I mean that, that that works honestly. No, it's not like it, you know I'm, this is scripted or anything. So, you know, I, so. Oh, hold on. Let me pull out my note cards I prepared for such an occasion. Uh, eggs, milk. Oh wait, that's my shopping. Oh, crap. <laughs> Damn it. It's, it's fine. I, I um, can't. I can't stick to that. Gag. So, what's the best way to describe yourself? You know, you're you're a VTuber, a streamer. Like, I, I don't know. Like, how do you how do you describe yourself as, as if if I didn't know who you were? Um, I would say, I would say you were going down the right path. I I have started doing a lot more of the uh, VTubing stuff. I primarily my home is always vr chat streaming it's what i do 80 percent of the time but the other 20 percent i've been starting to branch out into just being able to play any other game but as myself and this is how i choose to represent myself although mm -hmm. i have a new model coming soon so i will be transforming the look but pretty much just i stream what i want to stream I have a focus on trying to make people smile, even if it's sometimes at my own expense, usually in the form of uh, everybody knows that I get really easily <laughs> scared of stuff. And uh, I've okay. been told that it's very fun to uh, it's very fun to uh, make me unsettled. <laughs> got to work with what you got. I thought you were going to say getting flustered when people call you cute, but you know. I guess scared works too. No, we are not talking about that. No. Okay. Not cute. Alright. But, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess that's the best way to describe yourself as, like, more of a VTuber. I think a lot of people in VR chat, um, call, start calling themselves that. Like, obviously, I'm going to be a real field. Like, before VR chat, I didn't even know what a VTuber was. Like, I was just like, what is that? Like, and then because of VR chat, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people started getting into it. I know that like VTubing, I guess, started in, like you know Asia with like Japan and China and Korea and stuff like that. So it's sort of like with that as what's the person's name? Uh, Kaizumi I I or whatever it was called. That was like the first person to really. Kisuna I. Yeah, you. Yeah, I'm terrible at anything like Japanese. I can't read for shit. I'm gonna be honest with you here. I'm basically illiterate. But yeah, that that was like the mm. first um, really. Uh, version of it but the thing is that's like even beyond what viewer chat is like that's like professional like mocap suits or something like i don't know what the hell like how they do it but like people mm -hmm. say it's like a whole team of people it's not just like the one person it's like a whole thing now that's kind of yeah crazy. it's 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 well beyond anything i or most of the other people in vr chat who do that sort of thing would reasonably be able to accomplish by themselves yeah but it's definitely a much more comfortable means of uh, branching out beyond just the VR space for content creation for people like me. I'm not really that fond of being on camera, like where I can see myself. But when I have when I have the avatar on, I don't really care all that much because relatable. Well, I'm I'm able to I'm able to move around, express myself the same way as I would my myself, but I don't have to worry about what I look like or if someone comes into chat or whatever and starts harassing me over how I look, I'm like, Good job, you're harassing a 3D model. I hope you're proud of yourself. <laughs> yeah, put some clothes on. What do you mean? I don't know, I was just trying to imitate. I get I get I get what you I get what you're saying. Actually, uh I used to do YouTube and I used to do face cam stuff and I've never prior to that I've I've never like talked in front like in front of a camera or anything like that. I've always been behind the camera or I never like talk in front of a mirror. Like who the hell does that, right? But like before VR chat, like just like years ago. And um <laughs> when I would just like record like let's plays and just like whatever gameplay or whatever, right? And it was the first time in my life that I looked at my own footage and looked at, like, my webcam because, you know, you have to edit it in and stuff like that. That wasn't hard or anything. But what I saw was, like, I don't have, like, any emotion in my face. Like, I'm 
like I'm talking, I'm yelling, I'm getting excited or whatever, but like my face looks like a zombie, like constantly. I was just like, what the hell? Like, wait, so you're telling me for the, this is the first time in like 18 years, I was 18 at the time, like this is probably what I've looked like mm -hmm. the entire time. Th that, it was like a eye-opening moment to me. I was just like, wait, I don't really express my face. I need to like use my hands more or I don't know, like, it was, it was so like scary. all your emotion was just in your voice as opposed to yeah, your uh, my face or, or my body or anything gotcha. like that. Yeah, it was really weird because like I would be yelling in the game and like I'm gonna get you or whatever and like <laughs> it's just like. And meanwhile, you just look like you're just like. Yeah, I'm just like on the computer. Man, like this, this sucks so much. Yeah, and oh um, uh, yes, I was I was embarrassed for the like uh, heavily. I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> and then anytime I after that. I sort of like really um, whenever I did a face scan, I didn't do a whole lot anyway. But when I did, I did like maybe a dozen times. I, I would like really start like using body language and stuff like that, even if I wasn't performing as well in the game, because I would take off my hand, you know, my hands off the keyboard to like express myself. I'm like, whoa, what the heck, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just because now that you were aware of it, you became like almost uncomfortably aware at that point that you couldn't ignore it. Yeah, and if you're anything like me. Then you take the extreme and like kind of overdoing it a little bit just so you feel comfortable with your own. So like, okay, there's no way anyone can say that I'm not expressing myself mm -hmm. now. Yes, except then someone's just like, dude, you don't have to do it quite that hard. Calm down. Yeah. I guess says the one talking a lot with their hands right now, but that's just because that's I, how I am in VR. I, I, I think um, I think I understand at that point like why so many YouTubers are like so hyper. It's probably because in real life they're like the quite the opposite, right? They're probably just like you know they go outside and they're just like, hey, what's going on? But like in YouTube, they're like, whoa, like going like crazy and stuff like that. I think I, at that moment I finally realized why people are like so like hyper all the time. I mean it. I mean, it's kind of like, it's similar in here. Like, I don't, I, I definitely have a bit of a, uh, I don't say like a stream personality or anything. Like, I don't want to say that I'm a character or anything because I don't completely change who I am when I'm on camera. But mm -hmm. a lot of times when I'm in VR chat, like there's a certain, like, I guess, filter of sorts. Mm -hmm. that uh comes on where there's certain things that just become a bit more pronounced than they normally am in my daily life because if i was the way that i was on stream 24 7 i think i would probably be very tired because <laughs> i i tend to be a lot more i guess energetic and i don't know i don't know exactly know a good word for this maybe more it's just like bubbly in my interactions with people most of the time where i just kind of like i i'm much more likely to just kind of take some situation and get a little wild with it or just like <laughs> egg it on and just get super energetic with it as opposed to like in my normal if i was just on and i was just kind of hanging out with somebody i just maybe would like talk about something crack a joke we'd laugh there's a certain bit of performance out aspect to it. I'm not going to lie and say that that's not a thing, but it's not like it's not something I wouldn't do. It's just not something I would do all the time. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And I feel like that. I feel and I feel like it, I feel like anybody who streams to that extent, if they're anyone who is in the part of uh, streaming where they would consider themselves an entertainer to make people laugh or smile, that there's a certain a certain point where they have to look at themselves and be like yeah there's some things that get turned up a little bit and they're like that's why people get this perception of what are they like on camera versus off camera do i like that person like you have to know the line between doing it because you don't want to like tie yourself out doing it all the time or just because you're being fake with it yeah uh, i i get what you're saying like definitely people hype it up it's it's the same like uh youtube streamer mentality like people are obviously you know when you stream or make youtube videos you're not gonna be a boring person and be like hey guys i'm playing 
whatever. Like, mm -hmm. some people are like that and they're successful, but, you know, not the majority of people want to, you know, be energetic, have a lot of energy because you f people feed off of that, right? Like, uh, if you think of, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, Dr. Disrespect, he's always, like, in a character. He's always hyper. He's always very energetic you never see him he's just like hey guys i'm playing some college you know what i mean he's always very loud and energetic and it feeds off into the viewers like people are like pumped they're like hell yeah let's go you know yeah exactly you you get what you put into it but that is also like one of those examples i can almost guarantee i don't know him at all i can't guarantee i can't say this with all certainty but i would be very surprised if the way that like someone like dr disrespect was is like that all the time off camera too like there is like that takes a lot of energy and effort to be like that and so that's why there's to some extent like i can just there there's a lot of times where people like they say they need a break or they're just kind of like tired it's because sometimes like it, it takes energy to be in a performance mood sometimes even if people don't realize it and sometimes and like when you're not there people notice and since streaming's all about like what you what you give to your audience they give back to you unless all they give back to you is just uh memeing on you all the time in which well you've you've made it perfect in life you don't have to do anything ever again <laughs> but um yeah I get it. yeah they uh like uh i'll give the, an example like uh th they notice yeah um people are obviously gonna know like when you're faking it or like being way too whatever um well, a good, I don't know, remember who said it, but um, when when people create their personas, usually it's just an amplified version of themselves. So I think in real life, Doc is like a little more chill, but obviously when the cameras are on, he just hypes it up a bit more. It's like, imagine if he's like at a six out of 10, like on the hypeness scale, probably in general. And then when he goes to the stream, he's like on an eight or nine. You just increase your level it really depends though i mean maybe not maybe he's just a really boring guy in real life and then like but again he's been playing a character way before <laughs> twitch so he's been playing doing this for like six seven years i just used him an example but um uh what, what else was i gonna say um i mean when when people go to like twitchcon they have rules where you can't like stream in like the partner lounge so like I think they did that on purpose, be well, for privacy, but I also think it's because um, people have characters and, you know... Like... They need that spot to turn it off for a little bit yeah. because if they had to keep it up, the entire con, they would look dead by, like, the end of day two. Exactly. And some people, like, uh, a lot of people in, like, the GTA 5 RP uh, people, like, they roleplay, like, eight hours a day. Like in a character, a voice, or like mentality. It's the same one I did. I, I've talked about this all the time, but I, I played Kenny K. Cohen. I played a hillbilly redneck for a year and a half. I literally was a character every single day playing VR chat. I, I, I made like rules and guidelines that my character had to like go by, like hating anime and weebs <laughs> and like stuff like that. And I just mm -hmm. stick to it. So, like, it's just like a, a running gag. But at the end of the day, I just didn't want to do it anymore and i rebranded to this so i was gonna say at the end of the day you didn't hate anime you didn't hate weebs no i didn't otherwise you would have you would have become what you've hated <laughs> no i always i always loved anime and and a lot of cultures and, and and things like that i did it uh i did the character because i wanted it to be different because when i first started playing this game i told this story like a thousand times and i feel like i'm repeating myself like a broken record but like um, I, I, I wanted to be something that nobody was, and at the time, nobody really played male avatars. They played, like, the typical, like, male protagonist, like, whatever, who cares, right? But I played, like, a rough-looking middle-aged man with a beard and sounded like he was a hillbilly. Like, what's up, bro? What's going on? Goddamn weebs and, like, like weeaboos, and, like, it was just stuck out like a sore thumb, and it, and it got me noticed. Like, that's why people, like, liked me or, or noticed me or thought I was funny because I was the outlier. I was just like, why is this random hillbilly in this random anime lolly world? Like, what the, what the hell? This makes no sense. Well, well, yeah, because a, a lot of things and a lot of how people get noticed, like, if everybody does the same thing, then no one's really going to stick out the moment that somebody does something new with the game. Everybody takes notice. 
everybody knows that person's name and then they're like hey that's the person who did x or that's the person who started this and like that's how honestly that's how things just like if everyone just sticks to the same old thing all the time then nothing new ever really happens and uh it's when those exactly. like it's when people go out and make those uh new things or do something do something different even if it's just something silly or dumb just for a moment like people remember those things mm. and then like it gives people new ideas of things to start going on their own and doing and then that like that's the whole creative process right there someone comes up with an idea everyone else goes hey that's kind of cool and then you finally see a variety more so than uh oh this is going to sound really hypocritical right now but it's going to change in a couple days so uh mmd tda bases all the time oof oof wow <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I understand. At what least, you're saying. at least it's an at least it's edited. You can't get it straight yeah. off the internet as is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you're you're right because uh, when I when I started playing VRChat, I, I just used what the game had. Like I just like, found an avatar and just I didn't even do a voice. I was just whatever. But then I wanted to play a character because I noticed everybody like was using Big Al's avatars or like some typical TDA character that was just uploaded oh man that's a name i haven't heard in a long time yeah big gals um so um i decided to make uh imported the model of kenny from the walking dead telltale's game and then i and then i was just like i can't do his voice let me think of something oh i should like pretend he's from the country because um a lot of people were i'll, I'll admit it to admit it now and i've done it a hundred times now but like i've stream snipes so like Back then, that's why my name, my character, literally Kenny K. Kona. K. Kona is a Twitch emote. So I made him to a hillbilly because just like the Twitch emote, K. Kona. So I would stream snipe um, Hoover was streaming at the time, like one of the big streamers. And they would recognize because like everyone in the chat would just type K. Kona in the chat. <laughs> Anytime I talk. <laughs> like, and, and, that would, and they would just write like, I'll just say like... Um, What's up, brother? And then everyone would just say like, "Hey, Kona, what's up, brother?" And it just stuck on. Everyone liked it. And when when you and when the streamer looks at their chat and all they see is "Hey, Kona" and then "Sup, brother," they're like, "Oh, my chat likes this guy. Maybe I should like let him st stick around." So that's how I got noticed. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people, uh, uh, not a lot, but like a few people did the same thing I did. Like uh, some people play like other emotes and stuff like that, and like you know, play off the, yeah. the Twitch chat and like. You know, they they weren't mm -hmm. like some people are obviously like too aggressive with it, but like getting the person's face and stuff like that. But I didn't. I was just well, yeah, there no, in the background. I was going to say, there's a certain extent to where like people are going to like if you're someone that's like big sooner or later, like people are going to quote like quote stream snipe. It's just going to happen. But there's a difference between doing it for good reasons and doing it because you want to uh, run in there, be the center of attention, like completely derail everything going on, or just run in the room and be like, I'm going to say the N word and then actually Whoa. say it. No, it wasn't It wasn't like that for me. I was just in the world. I was sort of like yeah, no, that's a, in the background. That's a positive use of it. Like, where it's just like, this will be a funny moment. I guarantee you guys. Go in there. Do moment. It's funny. Everyone loves it. Nothing of value was damaged in the process. Well, it's funny because the streamers would walk up to me because I'd be talking to somebody. I'd be like, what you want, Lolly? What, what's going on, brother? What's going what, what, which, where, where, where's my son? Where's, where's Duck? I just like, I don't know, like say dumb shit like that, and then like, because my because mm -hmm. I'm doing an accent, everyone just sounds like a normal, like, hey, what's going on? You just hear this hillbilly like being really loud. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> okay, gotta investigate. What's this oh, yeah. guy doing? Yeah, what, what, when you're doing something visibly or audibly weird, it attracts attention. And people are going to want to know what's going on. Plus and when you're someone who can, I and when someone can improv and just go with something on the fly, like that, it mm. pretty much tends to be something that really easily sets up the mood for mm -hmm. something funny. I mean, like you talked to uh, you talked to Matty Dev recently, and I know he's been doing something along the lines of, oh yeah, kind of like what you used to do, where like his voices and the things that he do. With his with his characters, they sets up very clearly 
are the catalyst for a lot of interactions that wouldn't have happened otherwise mm -hmm. on streams and like more people have to realize that so, like sometimes if like they want to like they're like where's the content in this game sometimes you gotta make the content by being the one to be a little weird in the moment and when you take that step out and be a little weird then everyone else is like oh wait someone else started it i can now let go and start this train going and then suddenly you have a hilarious clip in like a vr funny video or something and everyone's laughing and having a great time and boom there's your content <laughs> it's almost like you have to make your own but yeah i mean it's almost it's almost like in order to make content you have to uh go out there and make it yourself you can't expect it to come to you all the time wow it's almost like uh, i make a talk show or something and set this whole thing up for totally no reason wait. at all wait I'm the content right now. Oh no! Oh no! It's like it's almost like every guest agreed to be on here, and I didn't like pull a gun on them or something. <clears throat> guys, guys, he's not telling the truth. Help me! Help me! Oh shit! I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, yeah. Well. Hey, here's a question I got for you. How did you get started in VR chat? Like, initially, like, how did you find this game? And, and did you start in desktop? Did you start in VR? Like, what time frame? Was this 2017, 2018? Um, okay, so I got, I got VR in the summer of last year, but I never really used it for VR chat more than once in, like, a three-month time span in there. Like, I pretty much... I saw a VR chat through some videos. I don't remember who it was that I was watching, but I would just see clips from it and thought it was super funny and like, hey, you know, maybe it'll be cool to just get on there and like mess around for a while. And my first night I got on desktop just because I was too lazy to set up VR. I don't know if I had it at the time, mm -hmm. but I, I got into that. I found my way into a hub world. Someone dropped a portal. I went through it and I spent the evening hanging out with somebody who had this really cool harpy avatar. It had like, I was so amazed of how they managed to make all the wings move and had deep philosophical conversations with somebody who was drunk off their mind while also in an avatar the size of an ant because they were literally an ant. And I figured, you know, if I explained this to anybody, in my family like hey what, how'd you spend your night oh i talked about like philosophy you know with an ant like uh, what do you mean an ant like i mean an ant they were like they were like this big <laughs> but i i talked for a bit and it was one of those times where i actually went into that with and one of the things that i talked about with said ant was how i was honestly really afraid to get on to the platform and just hang out with people and talk because I was really uncomfortable about my voice. And I mean, I still am to this day. I am extremely uncomfortable about it. And that person... Drunk people are very uh, straightforward with what they tell you about uh, what they think in the moment, so I appreciate... I, I don't remember this guy's name, Thank and you, I wish people. I did because... <laughs> Someday, I want to find that person going to be like, hey, you were the first person I met in VR chat, and you kind of, like, I still remember you. Um, but they, they just kind of, like, encouraged me, and I guess it, it, it stuck eventually. It took a while for that advice to stick, because it wasn't until, like, three months later that I finally, like, got out my VR, put it on, like, I had my controllers, I was moving around normally, I got to a uh, new user, I was able to upload content, and mm -hmm. for the most while, I was a mute for like, I think my first month and a half. Not because I didn't want to reveal anything about myself, it's just more like I was afraid to talk, and I felt like the moment I would talk, people would be like, oh my god, oh my god, it's a trap! Now, I get that anyways to this day, so I guess that didn't really stop it from happening, but... Um, I felt if I didn't talk, at least I couldn't, like, point to and be like, See? See? I sound like a guy. That's totally a trap. <laughs> and, um, I... I don't know why, but, like, I had a lot of fun despite being just a mute. And I very quickly went from VR to full body. And so for a while, I, like, drew attention from people 
in public worlds just because I was a blue user with full body, which apparently just was really weird that somebody with that little time in VR would have that kind of setup. But I pretty much, I when I got full body, I had gotten, uh, it was around the time when like the whole like Bowsette, Bouette, oh, anything yeah. et craze was a thing. And so I had a Bouette model. I still have it on my account, but I, it was the first model that I really kind of had set up for full body properly. And, um, well, I say properly, it's still a little scuffy. That's because I didn't know what to do with it. Did a little bit of messing around with animation stuff, and then I would, like, play space, move under the floor, and pop out at people like a ghost, and, like, just have, like, the little boo, like, surprise noise, and just... For the most part, mm -hmm. it was just to make myself giggle, but there was, like, there was one person I remember who just was completely terrified of this. Just somebody popping out of the floor and just looking up at them from, like, just their head sticking up out of the floor, like, Hello. <laughs> And eventually, it, it was in that same model, I started talking, and then just, like, I slowly got comfortable with people, and then, yeah, well, here I am now. I stream three to four hours a day, five times a week, so I have to be at least comfortable enough that I can speak up on a camera, otherwise I'd be having a really difficult time, because I don't know how, I don't know how people that stream mute do it, because I would, I would go nuts with how I'd want to interact with people, but I'd have no way of actually putting into words at the speed that I want to go in order to hold a conversation. Yeah. Um, so you've only been playing like, like what, what month? Um, so I, I, I think when I fully started to play the game was like, I'd say August of last year, maybe September, if I want to be a little bit more conservative with it. So like a year. I've been I've been playing. I, I was going to say basically a year, a year and some change now. Okay, I'm almost on two years. I'm an old man. I joined. I joined right before. I would say I started playing a little bit before the uh, knuckles boom fully hit, and then. Uh, actually kind of started like playing for myself and just having fun right as uh right as the knuckle thing was taking off all over the place damn knuckles i don't even see them anymore they're dead yeah part of me slightly misses that just because there were a few people that can make that really funny there were some people that obviously like made you want to bash your head in with a brick when they came in the room like that but there was just something so i guess some people were just so innocent with the meme, and it was really funny to see them, like, trying to, uh... Trying to, like, join in on the meme, but having, like, really no idea what it was. And I kind of miss memes like that, because there aren't re there hasn't really any been anything quite like that mm -hmm. in a long time. Where just people would join in on it, even if they had no idea what the heck was going on. 2020, we need to do better with the memes. 2019 didn't have enough of them. I mean, it had the cloning, so like every avatar that was ever a meme was cloned, like Ricardo Flick and everything else. I mean, I feel like... Yeah, but I mean, I mean, it, it obviously worked if everyone thought it was uh, thought it was good enough of a meme to keep copying it constantly. True. Or they just like using screen shaders, who knows? <laughs> <sighs> relatable um well my next question uh, i have to ask you is uh how'd you go about creating your oc obviously you said you're gonna get a new one in a few days but how'd you go about you know creating this character that represents you um so the the main the main design reason that i had for this because i never designed this character with the idea of hey i'm gonna be a streamer one day um at least for vr chat um i was just uh i was looking for something because i was uh because i had gone full body i wanted to get into uh dancing and i wanted something that was like comfortable to move in or at least would look like something that one would actually be able to dance in and i pretty much just i sat there with the uh, person who was helping me make stuff we were looking for like what sort of things that they had on hand for inspiration 
and I was just kind of thinking in my head, like, what are things that I like? And, well, the big thing that uh, came out to me was I wanted to have something that had, like, a bit of a starry look to it because I really like the night sky. I like stars. Where I live is really unfortunate because there's so much light pollution. You can't see the stars. And so, honestly, I just kind of designed the entire look of the uh, original because this isn't the original outfit. This is... Uh, version two of it there was a avatar version before this that was the one that i actually made originally but for the most part looks all the same here i just pretty much i just picked stuff that looked cool to me and then had a couple things added on that were uh, my own little touch like the star textures were from something else that were then uh, modified so that I could uh, use them for uh, scrolling emissions so that they would look like they would twinkle whenever I'm like just sitting in the dark and someone were looking at me and it would just kind of like be a bit of an eye catcher uh, mm -hmm. like the little heart the heart on my hand that I've always had because I've always told people that I wear my heart on my sleeve because I do there is literally no way for me to hide my emotions from somebody if I'm feeling down no matter what I tell people they're going to know and so I just kind of stuck with that. And I mean, that that heart pretty much became my logo because like the new avatar or people have seen like the art of it, that heart is not only on the hands, it became like a centerpiece on like a giant crystalline gem on the chest. And it's just, it was one of those things where it's just kind of like, oh, this might be cool. But then the more I looked at it, I was like, this actually kind of has some little significance to me. And I never realized how I just kind of came across that by accident like it wasn't it wasn't my intent to basically make it like my logo of sorts but it just kind of it kind of evolved into that because i guess i was putting some things to work to uh image that i didn't exactly know how to put into words at the time and i wasn't even realizing i was thinking about it but that, that's kind of really how it how it came about it was just a matter of Hey, this kind of looks cool. Let's piece these things together. It's something that I haven't seen anyone else do. I mean, I don't see anyone else running around with uh, hair that apparently reminds people either of cotton candy or Colgate toothpaste. Hell yeah. Yes, I, I get both of those. I've had more than a handful of people say that when they're high, they look at my hair and want to put their face in it because they want to eat it. And I'm like, I will appreciate it if you don't because I need this hair. It's very pretty. <laughs> Okay. So, all right, that, that explains a lot of lore about about your avatar, and then obviously you've you've modified it as time went on, like you said. And this is version two. Yeah, it was it was version two because I just I don't exact part of it was just that for the purpose that I had it was I was like ah uh, there were some things that I was thinking like. Uh, this would actually show a little bit better for like when I'm dancing if I change this up a little bit or uh, I kind of want to change the design of this or have more room for more stars and such. And then this is like version like 2.1 of the avatar because um, a friend of mine, uh, Fox God, yeah. got a hold of my files from a friend who uh, had like was one of the people I had to like help me uh mess with some model stuff and decided uh based off of an offhand comment i had about i was like you know if i had the ability to make the avatar a little bit thicker i probably would and they're like say Done. no more fam Done. and uh then they uh surprised me of that in my dms and i'm like who gave you my files but then i looked at it, i was like oh they actually kind of fixed a lot of stuff like they made the textures sharper they fixed the problem that the avatar had where the textures like even though they looked fine they had some sort of like weird alpha stuff going on with it where like if in certain lighting it would just randomly go transparent in certain parts but the parts okay. that it would go transparent in it made no sense i don't know how i didn't know how to fix it i just kind of lived with it but whatever they did in the process of touching up my avatar they fixed a lot of stuff and so i was like you know what i'm gonna run with this even though despite the fact that it's the same height and unity as the old version of the model it somehow got like two two inches shorter and 
every time like it was a running joke like every time i updated my avatar people just said that anytime i got a new avatar i would get shorter and shorter so a couple more model updates and i will be a uh adult looking lolly size Damn. oh no <laughs> i think um, see it happen i think the reason why i made me like you might be the same size but you look smaller is probably because of like the the length of the legs or something like that usually when you play around of well, like no, leg you, i was going to say the the leg length didn't change like if i if i showed you the side by side in unity they look exactly the same like proportion wise like top to bottom nothing was touched on the bones on the uh armature so like we look at it and there's reasonably no way that it should have done that yet when i get into if i were to get into every version of model i'd be like two inches taller and that's how people even noticed that there was a difference because for a while people were just like something's different about Ari but I don't know what it is and then they notice I'm shorter and then they start looking at the avatar closer and they're like did you get thicker? and for the most part yeah, people were like burgers. yeah I'm down with this but I actually, I actually quite honestly I caught some crap from people for that and I don't understand why like they're like oh my god why did you do that? I'm like well, first off, this is a gift from a friend, and two, I kind of like how it is. I don't understand why you're welcome to getting my in my life. face over this. Welcome to my life. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, welcome to your life of going from a male model to a female model. I can't imagine the amount of crap you oh, got. Yeah, I, mean, I still like, get crap. I, the, I mean, the most fun I poked at you was like, oh my gosh, I was your waifu, but now you're the waifu, and that was it. I like I'm perfectly happy with the uh, change that you made like you're it's something that made you comfortable why am I supposed to uh wh like why should my opinion on this situation matter it's like how you want to represent yourself and yet some people they see somebody like make a change to their model and they like act as if that person whoa that's like just that's start crazy, spouting dude. racist stuff on twitter whoa how dare you man you betrayed the, the brotherhood man you were, you were the brother and now you're this model what the heck it's just like mm -hmm. whatever if if you're going to like, like i'm honestly I always, I, i'm honestly prepared to catch some crap for my new one just because of the fact that the new one is is a cat girl yes and like oh my god cat wow. girls there's so many of those in VR chat but yeah it's also the reason why they're all like oh this is gross is that it's a bunch of public models that are all looking the same and they're just the same recolor of like one to two different models this is a completely unique model that no one else has so their argument doesn't really apply here but i know that i'm still going to catch a lot of stuff for it and i i don't exactly know what i'm going to say in the moment but there's some like if i'm going to get it I, like I've kind of accepted that, but I'm also just hoping that some people realize, like, hey, like, lay off a little bit. Let me like what I like. It's not like I'm saying I like anything illegal. Yeah, yeah. So what's the problem? I mean, I mean, I don't know. The the comments I got was like, dude, why would you do this? What's wrong with you? Bro, you're just doing this because you want more viewers or attention or something. Like, no, I. I played a character for a year and a half, and I don't even do the voice. But prior to like, I started, I thought about doing this back in February. I got this model in in June of this year, so I already planned it like months in advance, like way in advance. I was already uh, getting um, an artist to draw like a ca character sketch and everything, like months in advance. And mm -hmm. um, then, uh, uh, as a joke, I was just like, you know what? As one last hurrah, I'll uh, collect 151 waifus. Fuck it, because like. The, the running gag of like 2017 and like early 2018 was that a lot of people started harems and like dating people in VR chat. So I thought like, what if I just like mm -hmm. created and collected like 151, just like Pokemon, you know? But in instead, I'd be called like the waifu hunter. So that's what I did. And so it was wait, fun. so wait, the, the the waifu hunt was in anticipation of this change. Yeah, one of the reasons. Like of yourself. I did not know that. No, I just thought you were doing no, it because nobody. Was, I just thought you were doing it for the heck thought of about it. that. No, because like, well, one of the rules I, I I said to myself was if I don't get 151 waifus, I'll, I'll become a waifu. I already got 151 waifus. I just 
you know, I was going to change regardless if I failed the challenge or not. The challenge was to get 151 waifus before June uh, 21st. It's the day before my birthday. And uh, I got all the waifus. Um, it, was, it was not that hard. Like, I, I got 100 and then I pushed it to 151. Because I was just like, oh, this is so easy. But, like, it really got tedious and annoying because um, it just got repetitive. Like, with all the challenges I had to do. And then, like, people were just like... Be like, I don't want to be your waifu. Mm -hmm. I'm dating someone. I'm like, you know, it's not like I'm not actually dating you or anything. This is a joke. <laughs> I was gonna say if I'm actually if I'm actually dating you, this is going to become a very complicated relationship. So uh, yeah, I, I I caught on to that. I caught on to that fairly quickly. Like I well, realized yeah. it was just for yeah, because I, I told I, to, I told people like you know you realize that like if I was to date everyone, I would have to date 151 people at the same time, and that's like impossible. Like I could see maybe if someone dated like four people at the same time, like you're some fucking player, but like 151, yeah, nice try. I just did it as a joke and. <laughs> And um, it was just something yeah. I wanted to do before I um, uh, rebranded my whole channel to being more of uh, being uh, being this character, being Ryder, and being uh, something that more suits mm -hmm. the name Rebel. Because that's what I actually want to change my name to, not just that one Rebel. I'm actually playing on rebranding to Rebel. I just need to uh, actually get partner to do that. It seems like I've been talking to some Twitch staff, and they said that the name's like nobody has it, but um, they said if I hit partner, I might be able to <laughs> claim it. It's a, it's not it's one of those names that's on an account that nobody uses doesn't follow anyone. No, actually, refer, no, no, like, no, 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 not even that. Not, not even that. It doesn't even exist. You type in oh. twitch.tv slash rebel. It just says those. Oops, it doesn't work. Like the, nobody even owns the account. And I even asked staff. I was like, uh, nobody owns this account. Can but, I just have it? And they're like, oh, that's not how that works. If they'll either wait for the... you, you, you didn't you like, but it won't let you change your name to it. No, because it says, um, I talked to staff, I'm not going to say who, but um, they said that either the name, like either someone had the name prior to you or prior and they got banned. Like if you cannot take someone's name if they've been banned, either it's someone who's been banned right. or it's been recycled, but it's still like in that limbo state because you have to wait like a year or two before you can use it, uh, any name that's inactive. Um, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And then they said the only other thing you can do is if you ever get partner, you can um, send in like a whatever, like a email or whatever to brand the brand request. Of yeah, sort. Well, not like a brand request, but just a name change. Because I, I think that's how CC did. CC oh. used to be CCVR, now he's just CC. So if you're partner, I guess you get a little bit more perks in terms of like name changing. I think. Well, I mean, if you if you're partner and you can show clearly that like people know you for this and there isn't someone already actively using that name then there really isn't a reason why they should tell you no unless it fell into one of those things of like they were banned under tos or it was a why formally asked, partnered why asked that. person uh and they and the staff says they don't keep records of like previously banned people which seems kind of silly right like why? <laughs> whatever I don't know. The, all I said that basically either one day the name magic becomes available and I have to just snatch it up. But I check every day, so I don't know. Either that or I get partner. That's about it. And I, I think I was me gonna say, hey, hey, yeah. I I understand the checking every day thing. I've been doing that. Hell, I actually been doing that for multiple people in the process. Like I would just like anyone who I knew was like kind of like thinking in the back of my mind, like I want to try to get rid of some part of this in my name and just have the name I actually am. And I was, I know I was like among the people other than myself that I was checking for, I was checking for CC at the time just to see if it would be in there. I'd be like, hey, CC, I saw your name's available. Go get it. And that's just one last, last person I have to worry about now. So I was like, yay, now I, somebody succeeded in their hunts to get their name that they actually wanted. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm just trying to, even though like I at least have a name that doesn't uh, imply that I limit myself only to VR. Because it's Ariana Games, but I just want to have Ariana, but that apparently is an account that doesn't follow anyone except for one channel that doesn't stream, nobody follows them, they don't have no activity <laughs> on the account, yet it somehow never gets recycled. It I'm takes just like, like a year. Hmm. It's a way a very long time. If it's active for like one second, it resets the like one year timer. So. Well, yeah, yeah, I know. Well, see, yeah, here's the thing that like I checked well before my name was Ariana Games because like I've been on Twitch for a really long time. Well, not that long. Like I've been I've been around for many years on Twitch, I've been around and seven I years. had a different name. I I had a name different from that beforehand when I was just thinking that I I had my name based off of 
just being a viewer and never thinking I was going to be like a streamer or anything. So I didn't really care about having a brand to myself or anything. It was still Ariana, but the word afterwards was different. Um, but even back then, I kept checking all the time for the name Ariana, mm -hmm. and it was never available. And I'm pretty sure that same situation applied with that channel, just following one person but doing nothing. So somehow they've like kept it active for like six, seven years, and nothing's ever happened to it. And I'm just like, come on, if you're not going to actually use the channel, at least let someone else who actually is going to use the name have that. Please. Yeah, that's how I feel about my name. But nobody uses my name. It's like it just says it's unavailable. Like like as if it's been banned or something like that. So maybe someone did use the name and they got banned or something. That they can, they they said they can't tell me if it's been banned or not. They said the best chance you have is just if whenever you get partner and you apply for it, you can figure that out and maybe we'll give it to you. I guess <laughs> they didn't say that, but mm -hmm. they just said get partner. I'm like okay, dude. Like come on, man. <laughs> Little known reason for people that chase after that purple check mark. It's not just about the emotes. It's not just about the fact that you have partner and someone else doesn't. It's just that we could call ourselves what we actually are. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, that's the only reason the I want it. I mean, like, I just want the name Revel. Like, come on, send my bell. Like, come on. It's like... I mean, I, I mean, I, uh, the, one of the main reasons I have told people I've wanted to pursue partner is just that. I wanted to have, like, it's a very easy thing to point towards to show someone, like, hey, I'm not wasting my time with this. I've done something myself. Look at what I've accomplished. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of like, it's kind of like just to, like, honestly, just to show to my family, hey, look, I did something for myself in a creative medium. I can actually go out there and do something that isn't, like, purely mm -hmm. academic or science-y. I... I have a creative bone in my body, and I don't suck at something for once. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, like, all the... Uh, you get more opportunities for things, which allows you to keep growing with that. That's a... That's also on the back of my mind, but, like... I just... I'm also just wanting as a personal accomplishment to see that, like, hey, I can, in fact, do this. And I mean, like, I'm slowly moving towards that. Exactly. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's one of the things I wish I I wish would go faster sometimes, but I'm pretty sure anybody who has like that goal of like getting up to the point where they can even at least apply for it, everyone wants to go faster than they actually are. Well, but it'll take a few. The, the only thing you can do is keep. The only thing you can do is keep going, and like I know it's going to take a few attempts. That's why I'm like not in a rush because I know even if I got there, it's it's the it, chances of me getting really accepted lucky. the first go or even the fifth go well, the, are probably very low. Yeah, there's some people that got in the first try. Like I, I tell people this, like uh, when VR Chat was first blowing up, um, a lot of people got partnered from VR Chat, like when it was popular back in like early 2018. That's because it was like a random new category, and all these people are streaming it and. Twitch does seem to like, that was, if, and that was popping off and stuff. Yeah, so when they see like a new game that's not like you know League of Legends or a game that's existed on the platform for many years, they see that like oh a new category, it's like top ten uh, most streamed thing, and all these people are getting at least like a hundred, two hundred viewers. They're obviously going to partner them, but because this category's gotten a lot more stale and a lot more older, um, they're obviously going to be like hmm. I don't know. You may you just need to work on it more, more consistent, and like they're they're, they're being more selective, and they're like, yeah, yeah. it's like uh, we're not going to just partner every mirror streamer that has seventy five plus views or something like that. But yeah, it's it's even then, like I mean, like it seems like they're uh, it seems like I unless I know like the the general attitude of whenever stories of it come out on Twitter about somebody who would uh, apply to partner and get uh, turned down is that it's, it's very often painted in a more negative light of like, it's like, uh, I'm doing all this stuff and it's not, it's not working. Twitch doesn't like me. Like, yeah. I mean, maybe it was just, maybe it was just the wrong time. I mean, like, Maybe it's like sometimes they just think that you're success. Like they want to see if you keep trying. Like I feel like the the thing that I told some people recently that um are going for partner and like they recently got turned down is that um I feel like part of uh, why they are less likely to accept people on the first go nowadays, especially in the VR chat category, other than the fact that it's like really 
like it's a lot the standards have kind of gotten a lot higher for them is that they want to see who's going to uh take that rejection in stride and keep going with what they're doing in spite of that exactly. and like the people if, like if you get rejected you're like wow i can't believe it i've done all this work and twitch doesn't want to recognize me i'm giving up on streaming or like i mm -hmm. like i'm not going to apply anymore like they want to see who has the drive to say hey i think i should be partner and i'm gonna prove you wrong about your rejection to me and that that like i feel like that's what they're honestly going for they'll never say that up front like that that that's what they're doing but i feel like that's honestly a little bit of what it is is that they're going to like they i feel like if you should almost expect to be rejected with the expectation of they just want to see who's going to have enough conviction to say okay I'll try again the moment it becomes available to me and show you that I'm not giving up just because you told me no. Oh, well, I can give an example. I, I think I think you're on to something, or at least right in some regard. So what I mean by that is a good friend of mine named Bobber. Um, I know that he didn't get accepted on the first try. Okay, so Bobber, I, I, I don't know like his whole story, but like he used to stream VR chat and play this game all the time, and then he would do like math because he's like in I think university or college for like math and he would actually like do math problems in VR chat and like stream that. It was kind of funny, but like he would teach people how to do whatever math. And that was his thing. And then he sort of switched that to art the, the art category. So he just started drawing on his tablet and drawing people. And um, I remember him applying and applying and get, kept getting declined, declined. And I think I don't know how many times it took him, but I think it took him like four or five times of applying until he eventually got a partnered. Uh, even though he had like 120, 130 at the time, like viewership. And um, mm -hmm. every time he got declined, he wasn't like, oh, I'm not going to apply anymore. He wasn't like that. He kept applying and he kept making up new things to do. He was like, all right, I'm going to do an art contest. All right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a brand new thing. I want to keep hyping this up. I want to keep building upon this. He didn't give up and say, oh, shit, I didn't get partner. Fuck this. Like, he was like, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to make an art. Con like, he did like. Um, he made like a tweet where it's like, reply to this tweet and I'll draw you or something like that. His stuff like that. Like he kept going mm -hmm. at it. He kept going, pushing it really like getting more people to come to his stream and really support him and be like, Hey, I'll draw your character. Hey, I'm going to doodle this. Hey, we're going to like, you know, do, you know, like a bunch of different ideas. He didn't like just yeah. stick to one thing. Every time he um, was declined, he started ramping up his stream a lot more, streaming more, doing more things, getting more people engagement like, and engaging with the viewers. Like I, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like honestly, most of the time, unless they're rejecting you truly because they don't like your content, that like the rejection is just they want to see what are you going to do when you when we tell you no, and it's not for like a reason like, hey, uh, we're telling you no because your numbers are because you're getting view bots, and uh, we can obviously tell that you're not actually getting the amount of people that you're getting, even though that hit somebody who just kind of got really popular for their streams for a while and uh was really ridiculous after you looked at it because everyone knew that they weren't view botting but mm -hmm. hey what can you say um it says like okay they tell you no are you going to keep doing the exact same thing are you going to try something new or are you going to just become depressed and not keep going and honestly another thing that i feel like people don't realize or at least probably sh might want to think about more like those who have those dreams of partner are pulling the numbers to get partner and are in that position that they can apply maybe they've gone rejected once or twice don't think that just because you're not talking about it on twitch that twitch doesn't see that stuff where if you like if Post you're on going twitter. on to twitter or something and saying like oh my god twitch denied me again i can't figure out why i don't think they like me or something like i i'm not gonna name names or anything because it's not just any one person doing it i've seen it time and time again like people yeah, been a dozen times. airing their grievances with the partner process on twitter and i feel like just doing that like you're not helping yourself in the process like sure you might feel better about people going on there and be like oh it's okay we know you really deserve partner you'll get it next time but like if somebody's like because they're looking for your application and if you like if you're somebody who has your Twitter linked in your uh, Twitch profile, they're probably looking at that when you send in your application. And if they see you just like complaining, stomping on Twitch and complaining about the partner process in that review, you're not, it's not going to look favorably for you. And like, you want to put out your best image on yeah. 
all platforms it, it really does matter. associated with you um because there are people that i know of that have like a thousand viewers like i'm not joking when i say that i'm not gonna say their names but like there's people that actually have like mm -hmm. a thousand and like three thousand viewers and they don't get partnered and they apply like 15 times and it's not about hours. Yeah, like, it, it's actually because of what they said or what they did like six months ago. Action impact. So if you say something yeah. really stupid and really ignorant, they know about that, and they're not. They're gonna be like, "Why should I give this person partner?" Like, what? You said something really like, ignorant it, like a long time ago on Twitter. Like, we're not gonna partner you. So they actually do watch what you say and yeah. what you say on stream and off stream. So. Uh huh. And I mean, like, I'm not telling people that you can't be upset about being rejected on stuff. Like, I'm, like, I told someone's like. That they were like, I when I was telling them this sort of thing, and then they're like, yeah, but it, like, it hurts that I got turned down. Like, and I'm telling mm -hmm. you that it's perfectly acceptable to feel upset that you got turned down. Like, mm -hmm. if you're like applying to partner, you get turned down, and you're like, yay, I got rejected. It'd be like, uh, are you okay? <laughs> but it's uh, like, you can you, you can be upset about it. Like, no one's going to tell you that you can't be upset about it and that you shouldn't hide how you're feeling about it. But just Mm -hmm. There are constructive ways to express that you're feeling bad about it, but then it's also, okay, you're down on the ground, you're feeling down about it, how are you going to pick yourself up and keep moving on beyond this? And the way that you do, like, the, the actions that you take immediately after that rejection are probably going to be the most reflective of how well you're going to do the next times around. Yeah. Because... That, tra that track record, whether or not you feel like it will, is going to get noticed. And maybe it takes a couple more tries, and it's just a bunch of them saying, like, mm -hmm. hey, we are not going to offer you a partnership at this time. We just want, like, we don't feel like it's the right time yet. We just want to see what you keep doing. And it's not because, like, we think your viewership is fluctuating. Like, if they just say, we don't feel, we, we just want to see what you're doing and continue doing what yeah, you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. If they're telling you that, it's probably a good thing because that means that they're pretty much like right there on that and they just want to and that's like if they tell you we just want to see what you keep doing with that it's exactly what i was talking about they are just seeing well, how are you going to take this rejection mm -hmm. and will you keep trying despite that they want the people to drive that are going to yeah not take no at face value and just keep trying until eventually they're like look i was like look i know you told me no before but here's why you're wrong. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I just wanted to say real quick, yo, thank you, Darren, for the host slash raid. I really do appreciate it. What's up, guys? If you don't know, I'm doing a talk show of Ariana. What's up? I uh, just wanted to say that. Thank you so much. We're basically just talking about, you know, whatever. Right now, we're just more focusing on uh, talking about, like, uh, partnership and VR chat and how people apply for it and they get declined and and then uh, how that situation unfolds on people complain about it and stuff like that just in a general broad sense and and yeah like um mm -hmm. uh it, it's very difficult you know there's there's like fear chat's a lot smaller i would say like while well, VRChat gets like on average every day maybe a thousand people watching like all like collectively together and that's across probably what like a hundred channels and maybe i don't know you know, every day, you know, you get, like, your top streamers playing and stuff like that. And I was, like I said before, mm -hmm. it's very different to how it was last year when there was 10,000 people watching this game. And um, if you had more than, like, 80 or at least 100 viewers, they just partner you right on the spot. And nowadays, it's a lot more difficult. And I, I really do think that they, they have slowed down the partnership program. I think at TwitchCon this year, I think they said it like how many partners they have. I don't think that's ever been listed. Maybe I'm wrong, but they said they had less than 5,000 total partners. And that seems a very small amount, but it does make sense. Like because well, prior... they may have they may have also they they may have also been referring to active partners because like one of the things about like partners oh, yeah, that unless you partner. really royally screw up, if you really screw up, then they then they pretty much you once you have partner, you keep partner because mm -hmm. I know like back in my uh, World of Warcraft days, there were some of my friends who got partner. Um, I don't remember what their channels were like recently, but I have I look at their channels now and I guarantee you if they try to apply for partner now, uh, Twitch would just be like, Haha, no, because uh, they do not pull anywhere near the amount of that. And so I feel like there's probably a lot more pe partners out there that probably like aren't really doing anything now and i don't mm -hmm. know if they count that in the number or not 
because I feel like the, the number is lower. I feel like that's probably more likely to be active partners because I feel like there's more than just under 5,000. Yeah, it was like 4,800 or something like that. Um, I think there's also a different way to get partner. I don't think a lot of people know, or at least I was only told this because of a friend like prior to like the change of the partner program, and I think it's still a thing. Um, if you sign up with a esports like uh, team, um, you can get oh, yeah, partner. like a contract. Yeah, if you sign a contract with like an esports team or something, like just you know, that's an example of it. Cause I, I have a friend, um, she's from uh, 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 Portugal and she lives in like Switzerland or something, Switzerland or something like that. And she never got more than like ten viewers when she played League. Uh, she's a League streamer. And she got partnership, and I was just like, wait, how'd you do that? I was like, I thought you are supposed to have, like, 500 viewers or something. Like, this is way before the 75 uh, came out. Like, that was, like, a couple years ago. So I was just like, this is, like, five, six mm -hmm. years ago. I was like, how'd you get partners? Like, oh, I signed with this, I don't want to say the name, but, like, esports uh, um, legal team or something like that. I was like, oh. I was like, so how does that work? And they're like, oh, I have to sign a contract, and it's legally binding, and... I have to, like, there's certain rules that I can and cannot do, certain things I say. I have to, like, be brand friendly. I have to um, uh, only host people that are in the same team. And I have to, like, I don't know, like, go on their stream, like, their mainstream, like, once a month. I don't know. There's, like, a bunch of rules and stuff. But, like, hey, you get partner, I guess, or whatever. But, like, I don't know. I, you could do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, like, why do you want to be tied to, like, this one eSport? I mean, unless you're really into eSports and, like, really, I mean, you know, if, into if, that. If, yeah, if that's your thing and you're already doing that, then sure, go for it. But, like, that shouldn't be like, uh, well, I can't get the normal avenue. Let's try this way. Because, yeah, like, then it's just kind of like, what? it's like, okay, what's the point of that? It's, and I mean, there's also, I mean, technically, there's also like the if you were really big on another platform, like, oh, yeah. if you had like hundreds of thousands of people following you on YouTube or millions for that matter. I, I, that's that actually could, true. I think yeah. You can technically um, get partnered that way. So, like, if you show them that you have a giant audience there, but I've never really heard of anyone who's actually um, taken advantage yeah. of that. Okay. So I'll give an example. I don't know if they do this anymore. I could be wrong, but I remember many years ago like four or five years ago i remember uh, uh to apply for a partner it said that it, either you get like 400 500 viewers on twitch or if you had over a hundred thousand subs on youtube and had like an active like i don't know like a hundred thousand views per day or something like that on a new video like you have to actually be an active youtuber like a popular one they would give you partnership automatically um as far as i'm aware of not so many people got partnered that way only like some big youtubers that have like a million subs or anyway they're obviously going to give like why wouldn't they right like, like oh yeah sure we'll give you a contract exactly and i think more recently yeah. they started doing uh instagram people like i heard some instagram models that have like a million followers on instagram uh, they start streaming on twitch and within like a week or two they get partner because of just how much uh, publicity and how famous they are. Like, they even do it for, like, famous actors and stuff like that. Like, or actresses. Like, they, they do that. Like, there's there's definitely some, fa like, football players and stuff like that well, that stream well, on yeah, Twitch. yeah. Like, pretty much, like, one of the things in the whole thing, in that entire application is, like, if you really think that you, uh, that you meet the requirements without necessarily like having the twitch achievement that they'll consider it outside of that it's just you have to really sell yourself and stuff like that but like for the most part it's just mm -hmm. pretty much just you have to you have to get the right people at the right time and there's a lot of factors that go into it mm -hmm. and i mean like i'm obviously not an expert on this fact because if i were i'd be uh getting to that point where i could do the whole process myself but i have definitely done the consoling process for those who have made it up there and uh had the had the door shut in their face once or twice or five times i mean um i'll even give an example i don't think this obviously happens anymore at twitch in 2019 but i remember again like four or five years ago twitch was a lot more different and i remember people getting partner when they only had like way because that requirement was like 200 300 viewers or maybe 500 it really depend on what category you're you were playing in like what you're doing um but mm -hmm. i remember some people with like 100 viewers that got partnered that's because they knew people at twitch like they were friends with like twitch staff and they could really like 
don't know, buddy buddy with them and be like, hey, could you like give me a partner? But that was very they, rare. They could get someone favorable looking yeah. at your application or exactly. something. Exactly. Um, but that that was a long time ago, and obviously this is all re relevant now. But back then it was a completely different process. And I remember like it was very rare for someone to get partner unless you were insanely popular from a different platform or if you're just crazy uh just had to drive or had other people helping you out because this was before raids and really hosting was a thing so like a lot of times people are just like hey go help this guy out and just like send your viewers to somebody else well um, like like the term raid and ho well host wasn't a thing but like raids were technically a thing it's just there was no formal system built into yeah, twitch to facilitate it. that it was just like uh it was like hey guys Everyone type in the link at the same time, hit enter go. That was rating back then. And then it was a would, lot more engaged. You would spam your emote or whatever. Or actually no. Exactly. Well, not, not even the emotes not because much has changed be, to because that. if you did if you weren't a partner, you can have your own sub emotes. So you don't even know you're an affiliate. This oh, is yeah, way before affiliates. That, yeah, so yeah, you just cause... type like mm -hmm. you'd like type cap and be like how are you or some I it was don't know, either, it, whatever. It was either a Twitch emote or some phrase that everyone had that was like Yeah. Usually, just to you go smell. to and be like, oh, "Rebel raid, Rebel raid, woo!" I don't know. It was, and that was that yeah. was that was a raid. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we've been going for just over an hour ish. Um. Does anyone have any uh, questions in the chat at all? Anyone listening who's still watching? Um. If you have any questions for Ariana or I, we'll be answering them now. If not, I always have like a couple backup questions because I'm always prepared. So, but yeah. But anyway, we'll, we'll still talk about the rating stuff. Yeah, I remember, like, rating didn't, um, was an official thing, then they made it official. The problem with rating still is that if you raid somebody and they don't like the raid, you can actually get in trouble for that. Like, you can actually get suspended and banned if you, like, raid somebody. Not even if you do, like, it's obviously if you say, like, tell all your viewers to be like, fuck you, fuck, like, fuck this, like, obviously. But, like, there's, there's definitely some, uh -huh. some instances I remember um back then like this is like, like four four years if ago your raid is like well behaved and they just they didn't like the fact that you raided them you can get in trouble for that yeah i'm not kidding you like um i remember uh what? i used to stream years ago and i would have like 15 viewers and i would go to people that had like one viewer and i would raid them with like 15 people and i would just be like how is your day or like you're cute or so i don't know like something like that right i just be like hey you look cute today or something like fuck whatever right and like one person i was a runescape stream i'm not gonna say their names but like they got really mad they were the only person of like five people that we raided that was really pissed the person was like was like fuck you like i you're not allowed to do that i'm reporting you to twitch i was like what the hell like weird, what uh, i wasn't doing it i just said like like you cutting trees or something. I was like cutting yields or something. I don't know. It was like some RuneScape thing, and they were just like get really triggered at me. I was mm -hmm. just like, okay, like, and that's why I actually stopped doing raids because of that. I I did them for like a week. I had a lot of fun. Like people that had like literally one viewer, like no followers or anything like that, we would go to them and like people would light up and you would see them like smile and be like, oh my god, I have viewers. Hey guys, look, I'm gonna do this crazy thing or whatever. Like it was fun. To, to see people mm -hmm. like smile and stuff and then like one person gets like really upset over like nothing it was just like we didn't do it just ruins it for everyone else yeah so <laughs> after that i was just like uh-oh and then like i didn't get in trouble like it's suspended or anything like that but i did hear that like um uh she did report my channel and like i remember i think i got an email but it, i didn't get suspended they just warned me they said like oh it, you're not allowed to like go into people's streams if they don't allow raiding or whatever. This is before the raid option was even a thing. They said like some people don't like it, so like just be careful. It's just like, oh really? Like, come on. Like, I wasn't like malicious. I wasn't like saying anything. I wasn't being a troll. I just said like, yo, cutting some yields or something like. Well, I mean, like they're like spam I mean, bot. Like, they're you're spamming. Much... <laughs> yeah, it's just that. The problem is when you have rules like that that are based off of like subjective feeling, it's really hard to enforce them in a way that like, I guess, seems fair. Because like, sure, if you're if you're telling people to be like, raid pe raid them, it's like, okay, guys, when we raid them, we're gonna tell them to kill themselves. That'll be Whoa, funny. Well, yeah, yeah no, that, that's uh, like, that's uh, that, I didn't like, do that. Obviously, there's like stuff like that, but like, if you're just in there and like, I don't like the fact you raided me. Yeah, that like the, that was literally the reason. She, 
I guess it's a she. It was a well, girl, but a yeah, she's she was like, yeah, I don't like, like the way you're rating. Like, I, I don't like it, yeah, like, and you're spamming my channel. I was like, okay. Uh huh. Well, nowadays, since rating is actually more officially real, uh, shown by Twitch, you can uh, like block raids and yeah, you uh, can block raids if they're well, not on your friends that, list. Like, like you can. Or part of you can block team. raids if they're not on your friends raid or you're not on your stream team, or just block them outright yeah. if you don't want them at all. But I don't see why not. They're honestly the most fun parts of streams. Exactly. Like, I don't some mind people raids. Just don't want them. I've gotten raids from from people who don't even play viewer chat. Like I got in, like a, a fifty viewer raid from someone, some random like just chatting streamer dude. He's just like, "What is this game?" And I just showed him around. He's like, "Oh, that's pretty cool." Some random person like, and they said like all like in the chat like um. Uh, some inside joke to the guy's stream. I don't know what it was, but like I didn't understand what it was, but I could figure out their rating because like fifty people are saying the exact same thing. But I wasn't pissed. I was just like, "Oh, that's cool. Thanks for the raid, dude. I'll show you the VR chat." Mm -hmm. It's like, okay. <laughs> Welcome to my crib. I'll show you around. Yeah. Why are you playing a female avatar? What the hell? What is this game? <laughs> So I got a question here. Uh, why, why is there one staring at a mirror? Yeah, what, what the hell? Uh, do you, do your fishnet stockings hurt? Um, well, I never really thought about it, but um, well, this actually leads into a funny story of uh, the when we first got the avatar uh, modified because uh, the original version of this outfit didn't have those, but that was one of the things that Fox got modified on there. Yeah. Um. We accidentally uh, messed up the process when he was uh, moving all the vertices around and he wasn't doing it um, properly, like he was doing it on the basis or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it messed up all the blend shapes. And so anytime I talked, my uh, legs would bulge in and out. The hell? And that looked, and it looked, and in that case, yes, it looked very painful. <laughs> it also was hilarious, but I couldn't use the model because it was just kind of like, Scuffed. Utterly horrif it was utterly horrifying. Ever wear fishnets in real life? Um, no, just because they are really difficult to work with. I mean, like I've tried to, but they uh, pretty much they just like get caught on something instantly, and then you just pretty much like rip them, and you're like, oh, what's the point oh, of well, that? What well, about thigh highs? They're in the worst thigh highs in this game. I have some sitting on my bed right now because they're nice and soft. Oh, okay. They're also really warm as heck. I mean, like, there's a reason why people call thigh highs VR socks because they are comfortable, easy to wear. I don't wear socks. And they make, and they make anybody's legs look good. Like, literally, oh you have to try to make thigh highs not look good. That. I, I'm, I'm a hair. Some. I'm a hairy ass man. So unless you want to see some hairy man thighs. Uh, skinny boy, skinny that nerd thighs. That of didn't. Hair. That I was gonna say. Just because you have hairy legs doesn't mean that they can't look good on them. I can. I, I've been in the Dirty Dancers Discord for a, a long time, oh. and uh, that, that 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 did not stop people from doing it anyways. And it still looks it's like good. A, it's like a jungle. Saying. I gotta protect myself from the. Well, let me. Well, <laughs> let me just get a machete and just uh, go bushwhacking. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions? I might just answer one or two. I mean, uh, it depends. Sometimes, you know, uh, sometimes people uh, take a while or they're not prepared to answer a question. Unless you got a question for me, I'm talking to you, by the way, Ariana. Oh, me? Yeah. If you, unless oh, you got a question you know, for if me. I, if I have a question for you, um, well, I mean, I have one based off something that was a. Uh, brought up to me actually when i said that i was going to be on this uh today from someone else uh when are you going to put these talks on youtube so i feel like you could this. make decent videos out of this <laughs> um you're missing out like no like true. I'm you're the lazy. only real person true. that does like uh talk show stuff anymore in vr chat for the most part Damn. on a consistent basis um and i'm pretty sure people would like to watch that stuff well i do highlight them all so that they are on my twitch like videos like but it, i know nobody watches like highlights but if, well, when, when you yeah. highlight a stream it's on your yeah. stream it's on your my twitch account permanently it doesn't delete like a vod well, does yeah yeah but i was gonna say yes you highlighting them yes that can 
accounts, but there's a lot of people that to this day, despite the fact that people have tried to point it out to them, don't even realize that Twitch has a highlight section beyond just past streams. Yeah. Like, put them, put them on YouTube. I I'm could. sure somebody will watch I them. I could. I could. Do you want me to? Because, like, okay, if I upload them to YouTube, I would have to edit them or, like, download them, re-upload, uh, you know what I mean? Like, re-render, re-download, and all that crap. Do you, I could just highlight and just straight right raw like no editing just boop right onto youtube i could do that and just I mean, slap those that, we'll on see, there. i mean at that point it would just be to how do you want to show this off to people that would potentially want to get to know you who may not heard of you before but like they find you on youtube what kind of image do you want to put out there but i'm just saying you are it's a it's a potential avenue for new people to discover you, discover what you're doing with these talk shows, and then oh, I do who YouTube. Knows? That could that could, a little bit. Well, yeah, I know you do YouTube, but you could do you could do more with YouTube. I mean, like this is a perfectly good example of things that like you're already doing something that's perfectly good YouTube I'll, I'll, format. I'll, I'll give an and example. Not take advantage of it. So after after these interviews, I end the stream and then I locally record and then I take out my microphone on my camera or on this avatar and i just like ask really dumb questions that's what i usually do and then i cut it together and make a 10 minute <laughs> video so that's what I, what I usually do but yeah i guess you know what after this uh after this interview i'll all uh, stir i'll just i mean i don't have a lot of time so i obviously in a perfect world you would want to like cut it up into a 20 minute video and then like highlight it and whatever right but i just don't have time so i think i'm just gonna straight like upload it raw just like no editing just just put it up put st slap I mean, it's just, slap the it's thumbnail just on there to consider it's something to consider at least because it wasn't it wasn't my own thought it was something that uh someone else i was like why don't they upload it to youtube it's such a missed opportunity and it annoys me that they don't do that ah! and i'm not gonna say who it was all right you know what i'll do it i'll because i already am <laughs> highlighting them all so <laughs> might as well you're well you're welcome friend i have solved your problem they're on youtube now yeah now, now anytime soon. someone says they miss one i like here's the youtube link here you go done yeah there you go there you go we've yeah. come to an understanding yeah we, we did something um i mean there is other one other question but kind of as a joke question he said uh how is your erp life Oh, oh, oh my goodness, honey, honey. I am all about that ERP, that uh, oh, yeah? extremely ripe pineapple. Delicious. Oh, yeah. Here, have oh, some nice. ERP. Me too. Agreed. Uh, oh, oh, you want... you? Here, here, you can have some directed right at you. Oh, thanks. Wow. <laughs> oh, my. Never had pineapple like that before. Whoa, why is it so big? And... Ooh, woo. Who notices your pineapple? Oh yeah, you notice my pineapple and it's so large. <laughs> I can't believe it didn't fit before. What the heck? I need some pineapple juice to make it fit. It's not fitting. Oh my. Uh, Keep pushing. Uh, uh, that. Uh, oh, it uh, grinded up. <laughs> it's going into the blender to make some juice. You know, you ever churn a pineapple before? No. I have. <laughs> I can show you around. My dad taught me how to do it. He told me to stroke it before grinding it up. <laughs> uh, what are we doing with our What do you mean? Right I was talking about, I was talking about making pineapples to juice. Uh, oh, oh yes, yeah. Yeah, what totally are you talking? What are you, right. Yeah, what are you talking about? I don't know. What, what are you? What, what, what are you, you talking about? What are you? What are you oh, talking? Yes. I'm walking here. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, on that note, I think uh, we've been going for over an hour and we took some questions. So uh, this is your time to shine. So if you want to plug anything, you know, anything you're working on, your Twitter, your YouTube, Twitch, uh, I don't know, Spotify. Uh, <laughs> be a sound cloud rapper or something i don't know yeah. but uh i mean 
for the most part, I just I have a main presence mostly on just Twitch and Twitter. Uh, both are Ariana Games. Uh, follow the Twitter if you like uh, random banter, usually aimed at trying to be memey and making people laugh, because that's how I make myself enjoy the day. Uh -huh. Otherwise, I just I I stream on Twitch. I I make people giggle, and I like to explore. And in the process, um, if if you come into the chat and you call me cute, I will guarantee re at you and uh, say that uh, you're wrong. I'm not cute. I don't know who told them this lie. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm doing this because this is just going to make it worse. And I guarantee you that I'm going to like find like at least one person adding me on Twitter later, being like, "Hey Ariana, you're cute," and I'm just going to be like. Ugh. Okay. Full body right. scuffing. Help me. Well, anyway, <laughs> on that note, uh, I think we'll wrap it up here. So thank you so much for stopping by, Ariana. I really do appreciate it, stopping by and talking about Twitch and playing this game and all the weirdness and silly adventures that mm -hmm. people go on and all that stuff. But, yeah, I do these every day. Uh, I don't... Uh, well, I try to do these almost every day. I want to be honest with you. Sometimes I miss them. Sometimes I, you know, I, I don't get them every day. But I think uh, Thursday we have CC coming on. So uh, stay tuned for that. Wednesday, I just have to contact Heck someone yeah. real quick. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'll figure it out. I just need to DM some people and figure it out. But yeah, we'll have some shows. Like I said, I've done these actually 32 times. You're the 33rd third person I've done an interview with. Doing this over a month now, I Woo! think. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> the number 33. Yeah, exactly. I should have waited six more. So I could have been 39, because I like the number 39. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, on that note, uh, thank you so much for everyone for stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to be chilling. This is like the awkward part. I'm going to be honest. This is the fucking awkward part. Because, like, I don't know how to fucking end shit. So I'm just like. Yeah. It just kind of like casually look at the uh, recording like uh... Uh, no 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 actually what i do is um the last thing is uh i take a selfie of every guest so if you want to take a selfie of me and then, uh, sure heck yes yeah, let's go and then uh after that uh i just like jump in a world and talk to myself for a couple hours <laughs> that's usually what i do hey, so hey sounds like me sounds uh like... where do you where do you want me uh i'll set it up here because i have to like Oh, there. Okay. Disable the camera, camera and then re-enable it because it's sitting in the box there. Uh, mm -hmm. There we go. I got it. I'm so much taller. Wow. We'll take one more. Always take two. I always tell people that. Just like in real life, always take more than one picture. Mm hmm. All right. Boom. We got it. GG. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, here's your yeah, head pass. Fun. I mean, you are one of my waifus, so all the waifus they get head pats and cuddles and love and appreciation, and you know, yay, yay. appreciation. Yeah, I, I'm I'm appreciating something right now. What? That's just my airbags. You have some too. Yeah, they're they're very nice. Yeah, they helps me. Uh, uh aerodynamic. Air, yeah. air, air, aerodyn aerodynamic and uh, keep buoyancy. me uh, protected in the event of a crash like this. Oh, see? wow! I I didn't see? feel that at all. Uh, that, uh, uh, yeah, see, I would have I would have taken physical damage were it not for the protection of the airbags. Yeah, and when you fall on your booty, it's the same way too. I can't mm -hmm. fall over, but I if mean, I I've did, su I, I, I've I've suffered more than my fair share of injuries despite that in VR because my unfortunate scare response is to usually jump up in the air, which usually means I fall down afterwards. Sounds about right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll see you around. I'm gonna be uh, I don't know uh, talking to myself like a crazy you'll be, person. You'll be you'll be in town. Yeah, I'm in town doing stuff. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll see you around, right. gamer. Bye -bye. Oh yeah, gamer status. Whoa, Ari is cute. So, is this how a man gets viewers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>